The glory of the Lord filled the area with light, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. A message that will fill everyone with joy. Today your Savior, Christ the Lord, was born in David's city. This is how you will recognize him. You will find an infant wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly a large army of angels appeared with the angel. They were praising God by saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who have his good will. The angels left them and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph with the baby who was lying in a manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story was amazed. Mary treasured all these things in her heart and always thought about them. As the shepherds returned to their flock, they glorified and praised God for everything they had seen and heard. Everything happened the way the angel had told them. I, I want to ask the question, how is it possible that as we get ready to enter the year 2022, that there are folks who still don't know that Christmas is about Jesus. How is it possible in our day and time, with all the technology that we have, and all the folks who claim to be Christians, how is it possible that there are people who still do not know the true meaning of Christmas? I think part of the reason is Christmas has become so fantasized. Christmas has become so secularized. Christmas is the thing that, that it's about money. It's about what we do. It's about what we give. It's about who we are. And it's not about Jesus. But you know, as I look in Scripture, I find that it's not new. For folks to not know the true meaning of Christmas, that's not a new thing. It happened in the Bible. So what I want us to do is we ask, what is Christmas to you? I want us to look at three folks from Scripture, or three groups of people, that didn't get it either. But they didn't realize that Christmas was about Jesus. And I want us to see why they didn't realize that Christmas was about Jesus so that we don't make the same mistakes they do. So the first one of those, it comes from our passage today, and it shows us that to some, Christmas is busy. To, to some folks, Christmas is just busy. How many of you would describe Christmas as busy? There's all the stuff going on and things to do, and then the church wants to have stuff as well, and we've got to go there, and, and oh, we just can't keep up, right? Well, from our passage today, we find a key person in the Christmas story that we don't even know their name. Well, we, 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 all we know about them, and we really don't even meet the person, we just know one thing about what they do. But I think it shows us just how busy things can be. And that person is the innkeeper. One day a man and a very pregnant lady comes to his inn, but he's already filled up. Now, I want you to kind of get the idea of what an inn is in that day. You know, he, he didn't go to the Hampton Inn. Or he didn't go to the Holiday Inn. Or he didn't even go to the Red Roof Inn. Well, they would have, had, would have been a little more like what we would call a hostel today. And basically, it was somebody had probably added a room to their house where they would take in travelers. And just to let you know, look around, because you'd be in the room with all the people. Because basically, you, you would just put your mat on the floor. And that was where you, you just had a roof over your head and walls around you. So you had security, security protection and, and you were out of the elements. That was probably what the end was. But when Joseph and Mary came, there wasn't any room. Now, you know... Because we've all seen little children's Christmas plays, we get this idea that they come and they knock on the door and the innkeeper says, sorry, I have no room, but if you would like, you can stay in my stable. Nowhere do we find in Scripture that the innkeeper offered his stable. Matter of fact, 
the stable wasn't even what we probably think of today. No, we think of a barn. Probably, the stable was one of two things. Some say it was a cave. Others say that it was the courtyard within the, the, the town. Where, where they would bring the animals in at night and surrounded by the houses so that they wouldn't be in danger. At best, it was a courtyard. If not, it was a cave. And when it says that, that Mary laid Jesus in, in the uh, rack of swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, it wasn't a wooden bee structure filled with nice, clean straw. It was probably something carved out of stone that the animals ate or drank out of. So when we look at the story, we don't see a lot of things that we think the Bible tells us. But here we have an innkeeper who had no room for Jesus. So this morning as we say, make room in your heart, the innkeeper had no room. The only thing the scripture tells us is in verse 7 where it says, She gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there wasn't any room for them in the inn. And keep in mind, it's census time. This is since they've never done a census like this before. So the Roman government says, we want to count everybody. And just like the census today, the reason they count is so they can know how much taxes they're going to get. So everybody wants to go to the city of their ancestors. Joseph was of the lineage of David, who was from the town of Bethlehem. So he had to travel to Bethlehem to be counted and to pay his taxes. So didn't everybody else that was of the line of David. So all these folks that are traveling to Bethlehem, there's no place there to stay. And as they go, and they get looked, they, 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 they get money placed. The guest space is full. Now put yourself in the place of the innkeeper. You've already got a full house. Woo you're making money tonight. All these people come, they need a place to stay. It's going, well, sorry, I don't have anything else available. He's busy. And we've already said, we can relate to busy at Christmas time. Christmas can get so busy. I see people stressed at Christmas. Holly and I went shopping last evening. Yeah, I know. And it was awful. Thank the Lord for Amazon. We went into one store that wasn't as big as this room, and a hundred of our not closest friends were there as well. And I think we were the most patient people in the place. Because everybody else was like, excuse me, pardon me, getting right through, and it was awful. Christmas is stressed sometimes. Christmas sometimes, sometimes at Christmas you see the short tempers. I mean, by the time we went to however many stores, my legs was hurting, my back was hurting, and I could feel my views growing shorter and shorter. Often that happens at Christmas. Sometimes folks are just frazzled. I remember the time, one year, I, we waited until the day before Christmas to do our Christmas shopping. And, and so, so I went to America's favorite store, and, and, and I did all my Christmas shopping. Holly was doing something, and I went and did the Christmas shopping. So I'm just going through, yeah, I think the kids are like this. It was frazzled. Sometimes Christmas gets that way. Do you know something else I see at Christmas? See, a lot of times folks get depressed. There are more depressed folks between Thanksgiving and New Year's than any other time. Christmas is busy. Why do we get so busy? Why do we get like the innkeeper to where we're so busy that we, we forget about the true meaning of Christmas? Oh, when we come to church in December and we read the Christmas story to our kids and we help others. And we give a little. But we do all these things like good little Christians should. But what are we really doing about the meaning of Christmas? We're still missing Jesus. 
And I want to tell you this morning, if Christmas to you is just busy, you may be like the innkeeper. You might be missing the true meaning. So let's don't get too busy for Christmas. The second thing I see in our story is sometimes folks become too religious that they miss the true meaning of Jesus. And for that part of the story, I want us to look at the citizens of Jerusalem. Now, as we read the passage, we find that the good news of the birth of Jesus came, first of all, to the shepherds. And I find that intriguing. The, the shepherds were the lowest of society. They were kind of the outcasts. Because of the job they did with the sheep and men being with the animals, they were not even, they weren't even considered religiously clean. They would have to go through a week-long process just to be able to go to the temple to pray or to make their sacrifices. Well, they couldn't leave the sheep for a week. So they were just called unclean. They were outcasts. They were the lowest of society. But that's where the good news came first. And as the good news came, it, it came to the shepherds. And they quit. The Bible tells us they, they, they said, well, let's go see what's happening. And they left their sheep and they went down and they found the baby just like they said, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And when they got there, they, they, they worshiped Jesus. And then our scripture says, and they told what had happened to them. Now, if you look at it in the version that we read, it almost appears like they know what the Mary Joseph. And I'm sure they did. But many other translations let us know that as they went back, they didn't just come and worship the new baby and then go straight back to the sheep. They went and they told everybody. Could you imagine what, when all of a sudden you're, you're walking around the fields, you're watching the sheep, and all of a sudden this angel appears to you and tells you the good news that Jesus is born, and then there's a whole multitude of angels praising God. Are you just going to meander in town and go, yep, there it is, and, and go back? You're going to tell everybody. But notice scripture doesn't tell us that anybody else came. We really don't see anybody else coming in scripture until sometime later when the wise men come from the east. So what about all these folks from Jerusalem? They had heard for years. They were Jews. They had been taught of the coming Messiah. They had been taught that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. The prophets were told that. They had been taught that the Messiah would come, but when it happened, they didn't come. You want to know why? I think it's because they were too religious. I don't think the reason they didn't they become so religious. Oh, our Messiah will be there. It's not going to happen today. And they totally missed the true meaning of Christmas. You say, well, I don't think that would happen today. I don't think we can get so religious that we miss Christmas, or we miss the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, a few years ago, uh, a lady I knew was becoming very active in, in, in her local church uh, here in our area. And they, it's one of those things where they said, okay, we need somebody to take care of the Christmas play for the kids. And, and, and you know, when, when that happens, you know what happens a lot of times? All of a sudden, everybody in the church gets really busy looking at their feet. And finally, this lady says, well, I'll do it. Now, you have to keep in mind, it's like in many other cases. Nobody else wanted to do it, but they wanted it done their way. So this lady looked at their traditional Christmas play, and she said, well, I think we can change a little bit. That was a no-no. You don't dare change the traditional Christmas play of the church. This church, for now four generations, has done the exact same Christmas play every year. 
Folks can record in their families their generations that have played the same parts. I remember one child from that church telling me, my great-grandmother played an angel too. Because they've done it. And when she went to change it, <laughs> we can do that. We become so religious that we miss the true meaning of Christmas. Often we have a tendency that we let our traditions get in the way. We've always done this at Christmas. We've always done that at Christmas. We have to do it. Because it's what we've always done. And often we let our super spiritual self get in the way. Well, if everyone would act like me in church, if everyone would dress like me in church, I don't know why these heathen don't sit like I do in church. You know when we get that way? We become so religious. We miss the true meaning of Christmas. Have you gotten so religious that you're missing the true meaning this year? We find some are just too busy. Some have become too religious. But the third person I want us to look at from the Christmas story reminds us that the sum. Christmas is all self-centered. Christmas is about me. Now this character is a man named Herod. We, we don't find his story in the book of Luke. We find it in the book of Matthew. And Matthew tells us about Herod. Herod was a king. Herod was the king over that whole area. He was the man in charge. Now history tells us a lot about Herod. Herod was a very jealous king. Herod was the type of guy, he was in charge and he wanted to make sure everybody knew it. And he wanted to make sure that nobody else became in charge. He, he was so jealous that at one point in time he had every member of his family killed so that they wouldn't try to take the throne from him. That's the type of guy that Herod was. And remember, Herod was the guy when the wise men came to seek Jesus. They, they, I mean, where would you find the king? At the palace, of course. And they go to the capital city. And they went, you know, where is he that was born the king of the Jews? And Herod goes, I have no idea. This is the first I've heard of this. So he goes to the religious scholars and where is the king of the Jews to be born? And go, oh, that's easy. He's in Bethlehem. The prophets told us that. So he goes and tells them. And Herod says, when you find him, come back and tell me. So I can, well, so I can go and worship him myself. Herod didn't want to worship him. After the wise men went and, 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 and met, met Jesus and gave him their gifts to the newborn king, the angel told him, go a different way home, don't go back to Herod, they did. When Herod realized they weren't coming back, Herod was so jealous, he ordered that every boy and child, two years old and under, would be killed. If you kill them all, you've got to get the right one, right? That's how jealous, that's how wicked he was. Herod was such a wicked man that when he was about to die, he had a bunch of prominent people in Jerusalem arrested. And he gave the order that the minute that you hear that I have passed away, kill all these people. That way there's going to be mourning in Jerusalem when I die. It may not be for me, but there's going to be mourning when I die. That's how wicked the man was. Now, if I could describe Herod in one phrase, it would be this, self-centered. Herod was all about himself. He was so totally about himself, he missed Jesus. He missed the true meaning of Christmas. Now, I know, as we looked at those who are busy, some of y'all were going, I'm pretty busy. And as we looked at those who are religious, some of you probably thought, well, I have a tendency of being a little religious. But then when we look at Herod, you're all thinking, I'm not as bad as him. Thank goodness I'm not that bad. But you know, here's the thing. If our focus is on self, this year Christmas, we 
we are just as bad as here. If our focus is on ourselves, what will people think of the gift that I got them? Well, how will they like my Christmas life by them? Will everybody come and go, oh, your inflatable Santa is better than anybody else's? Will they like my Christmas outfit? If Christmas becomes about self, then we're just as bad as Herod. And we've totally missed the real meaning of Christmas. If Christmas becomes so about us, then we've missed it. We've missed the true meaning. Now my question this morning to you was this. What is Christmas to you? And here's where I want to challenge you. I want to challenge each person to, to take a moment and just ask God to help you look at yourself. And ask yourself this. Have I gotten too busy that I'm, I'm missing the true meaning of Christmas? Have I gotten too religious that I'm missing the true meaning of Christmas? Have I gotten too much about me, too self-centered, that I'm missing the true meaning of Christmas? And as God reveals to you, if there's something that needs to change, then why don't we right now make a commitment to change? That's called repentance. It's not only confessing our sin and saying, Lord, forgive me. It's turning from, it's a change. It's turning from that sin to follow Jesus. Because everything needs to be about Jesus. Especially at Christmas. So my challenge is this. Let's be contagious this Christmas. We live in a world that needs what we have. They need to know about Jesus. Are they getting it from us? Let's make this Christmas about Jesus. In a moment, our praise team is going to come and we're going to sing our next song. And as we do, that's where I challenge you. Do you need to make some change in you? Is God somehow, through that working of the Holy Spirit, inside of you letting you know some things really do need to change? Then it's so simple as repentance. Lord, forgive me. I want to follow you. <coughs> I turn from my sin to do things your way. And maybe this morning for you is a thing of surrender. To, to surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus. Remember the story with the king who came? He wanted them to know that Jesus was the shepherd. And that meant the one who leads the sheep. So maybe for you, for the first time, the Spirit of God is convicting you that you're a sinner and you can't save yourself. But you need to surrender to Jesus. You need to let him be your shepherd. Then you say, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. But I believe that when you died on the cross, it was so that I could be saved. So that I could have eternal life. So that I could be forgiven. So today I ask you to forgive me. And I want to turn from my sin to follow you, Jesus. We sang this song, Make Room in Your Heart. Is there room in your heart today for God to write his story. How do you know the answer to that? You ask, what is Christmas to me? Father God, thank you so much for your work. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that Christmas is about Jesus. And we want our world to know the Jesus that lives in us. So we want to be contagious this Christmas. Lord, I pray for every person who hears this message. 
that, that, that you're speaking to right now. That as your spirit speaks in their heart, they will change and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.